Are you a book lover? I sure am. I have lots and lots of books. And on this journey that we're in to uh, understand mediumship, understand the tricks and methods of mediumship, I think it's important to be able to have some background on mediumship. It, I think it helps a lot to understand the perspective of how far we've come, what the mediums are doing these days compared to what uh, they did back in the 1840s. So I'm going to review, well, I'm going to talk about a book. I have lots of books I've read over the years that are involved in the history of mediumship or that are about critical thinking and so on. And I think that, um, let's take a look at them. These are very, very unreviewed books. These are books that probably would never have been reviewed. So I want to start out with this book. And it is by Barbara Weisberg, and it's called Talking to the Dead. And it's about Kate and Maggie Fox and the rise of spiritualism. So there's probably lots of books out there on Kate and um, Kate and Maggie Fox. Uh, it's important to understand the history of what was going on in this era and the history of these these sisters. Um, so you can find lots of information on them. I don't know if this is the best book to read on them. I, I haven't read lots of books on them, but it is published in, let's see, I've got this used somewhere. It was published in 2004 and it's HarperCollins. And you know where a really good place to find information about the Fox sisters is, is on Wikipedia. The Wikipedia page is quite good, and it has lots of citations that when you click on them, the citations at the bottom, you can find those for further reading. So there's a lot of smaller articles that have been done on the sisters. But this is a more in-depth look at their lives. And I think it's fascinating because it, it talks a lot about um, the people around them, what they thought of the Fox sisters at the time. So let me give you just a really quick overview of who the Fox sisters are in case you haven't uh, the information in the background. But these are two sisters, uh, Maggie and Kate, that were living in kind of, um, it was not in Buffalo, New York, but it was up in that area of New York where it was very cold. <laughs> the, uh, the, the snow came off of the uh, lake, I think it was Ontario up there. I'm from California. I don't really know all this on uh, my ge geography in you know, the East Coast as well as I should probably. But anyway, they were very young. I think they were 10 and 13, or maybe they were 7 and 10, something like that. It was 1848, I think. And they're the youngest children of the two, the parents. And there was marital problems. The older children had all left. I, the, there was four older. I think David lived somewhere nearby, had his own family. And their sister, Lee, Leah, she lived farther away. And she had had a very, she ended up having, I think, three or four marriages. And I believe she was um, much older than they were. Uh, the point was, is that these two sisters, this is back you know, spiritualism to some extent existed back in, in the United States and the UK and so on. I mean, we've had spiritualism since human beings evolved the idea that, you know, maybe there's something outside of death. The point is, is that these two sisters popularized modern spiritualism and they were new in town. I think they've been there about a year. Their father was very religious and their mother was very credulous. And what they would do is they would, uh, well, we know what they ended up doing much later, but they ended up uh, making sounds uh, using knuckles on their, their knuckles. They had a way of using their toes and, and popping their, their toes and it would make a very loud pop. And or so another trick they use is they would take an apple and they put it on a string 
and they put it so that it would like they could pull it tie the string to their toe and then they could pull it and it would like hit it was loud enough in these little tiny cabin where they lived well cabin little house where they lived with their parents and it was one bedroom so it was mom and dad in one bed and the two sisters in another bed it was very cold and so it was lit with a candle so there was almost nothing to see you couldn't really find out what was going on and the and the two girls were huddled together and just freaking out and so of course the parents didn't think that the little girls would have been able to perpetuate a, a hoax on them so they really believed that this knocking sound that was happening around them was coming from the spirit world and then it got it evolved over time and they brought their neighbors in and it got to be like a not like a yes one knock for yes two knocks for no they got into um, where they were going through the alphabet, like how many knocks, and then they would be able to to go through the alphabet. It, it got pretty involved over time. And what ends up happening to these sisters is their older sister, Leah, she becomes like a medium herself. She got into it. And there was a lot of alcoholism. The family apparently had a lot of alcoholism problems. And these sisters once they became famous they blamed their alcoholism on the fact that uh, wealthy people would wine and dine them you know treat them to champagne all the time and that they um, would drink all the time and so alcoholism became rampant in their lives and it really affected them they had kate had children i can't remember if maggie does or not and it, and her children were um, apparently neglected and almost taken from her. And I think they were like in their early teens, like 10 and 13, the, the, her boys. And the rumor was that Leah had tried to have them taken from her. And so there was a deep hatred of these sisters with their older sister, which is why this book is about the two younger sisters who started it all even though Leah was heavily involved in mediumship and, as I said, becoming a medium herself. So um, later on in life, Kate and uh, Maggie end up uh, renouncing that they were, that they were, um, and that it was all fake. They had a big, like a big auditorium they rented and they went up on stage and said, no, we made it all up. And then they brought people on stage who could see what they were doing and how they're cracking knuckle. How the one sister, the other one stayed in the audience, how they're cracking knuckles and stuff like that to make the sound. And spiritualism had already taken off because this was like 30 years later or something. And people were really upset because they had already bought into this um, life of uh, spiritualism, believing in speaking to the dead. There's mediums and there's table tipping and can't remember i don't think the ouija board had come out yet but other kinds of things like that had come out automatic writing i believe and so it was a whole phenomena now in this book that's written by barbara weisberg she talks a lot about the history of the time and she talks a lot about the sisters uh, motivation of course they're very young and uh, when they get started and it was like a hoax um they were probably you know uh lonely they didn't have a lot of friends their age necessarily in the area that they just moved to and they're messing with their mom and it kind of got out of control i think that's her interpretation that's and it's my interpretation too knowing what i know about the fox sisters now um as more and more people believe them and their fame rose what ends up happening is, you know, they're hired and touring and they go all over the world and um, become these famous mediums um, that can communicate with the dead. One of the things that they did, and I, I, this is overlooked, always overlooked. In fact, this author overlooks it, that their first claim was that their spirit in their house where they were living was a peddler a person who came door to door and sold wares um you know knock on the door and said you know i'm selling pots and pans or whatever it was they were selling and they said that the man who had lived in the building before them the house before them his name is bell he had killed the peddler and took 500 dollars, which was an amazing amount of money at that time and buried his body in the in the basement of the house 
Okay. So that's checkable. You can, you can go and look and see if there's a body buried in the basement of the house, but the, the different people who came to, to investigate, they would go down to the basement and they'd start digging and water would just come up just large amounts of water. Like I said, this is near, this is near Buffalo, um, Great Lakes. It, um, you know, you dig a little bit, there's water coming up. So they dug and dug and dug many, many times and they did not find a peddler or they didn't find anything of the sort. Years later, they do, I think, knock down a wall or something and supposedly some bones are found and some uh, like coins or something like that. And so rumor starts that, of course, they found the body of this peddler. No, they didn't find the body of the peddler. What they found were like chicken bones and, and um, other objects, things you might, you might find. Um, some people say it was a hoax and it was planted there. But So there's so much going on, so much misinformation. And over a period of time, and they don't have, not that social media is going to be that much better, but you don't at least have a documentation. It's like what so-and-so told you, who told so-and-so, who told so-and-so, what you heard, you know, the story. Now, the thing is, as I said, the thing that's really forgotten is that they accused this man of murder just based on what their spirit um, told them. And this man, Bell, had huge hit to his reputation because of course he didn't kill anybody and uh, the sisters weren't even really interviewed whenever they finally went in and um, did an investigation this guy he had to have all these letters written by his friends and family that he was a credible guy and and that he you know was an honorable man and he wouldn't have killed anybody and and so on so the sisters weren't even asked they were too young and it was it was a crime and i don't think that ever got i don't think that ever got uh, taken care of where this guy is trying to battle for his reputation and the, you get this whole chunk of people who believe you know probably were shunning him and maybe his family and you know not wanting to deal with the guy because they thought you know where there's no where there's smoke there must be fire and that's part of the problem with mediumship is that that these the accusations can be made and you got a ghost that's supposed to be your evidence. And even when real evidence is shown, you know, or lack of evidence because they dug up the, the basement and they couldn't find anybody. And every time you tried to dig it up, it would just water would come through. So it was obviously not a place to bury a body. Um, that this guy, you know, was great harm caused to him and his family. And the Fox sisters never owned up to that. Not, not that anything I've ever seen. So, you know, let's keep that in mind that there's some serious harm, not only that they're doing directly, but indirectly to people. And no, I'm not giving these girls a pass on it. But what ends up happening that in the book that they explain a lot, the, the author comes through, is the power of um, the lack of power that women had at that time. And I believe they're just starting to get the right to vote or very soon after this. This is before the American Civil War. And mediumship, I mean, just went like nuts when the Civil War came because, of course, there were so many people who had died, uh, young men, um, and the family, you know, was grieving. So there, when there's a war, mediumship just goes like crazy. Same with the pandemic, we found. But women weren't necessarily able to work and have careers and educations and so on. So when there was an avenue for them to be able to have power, they were empowered. And these women ended up having power of some kind, you know, being sought out and traveled and and um, able to do live independently of, uh, without having their parents or a man, you know, be married. So mediumship became one of those things it was a woman's rights issue and uh, suffragettes and um, women's rights uh, temperance all that kind of stuff kind of all was tied together a lot of it uh, oddly enough was up in that buffalo new york area it was all happening right in that area susan b anthony i believe and all all that ilk were up in that area anyway so in this book 
as I'm saying, it's, um, um, they talk a lot about the empowerment of women and how these young women were really, didn't have a lot going for them until they ended up getting into this mediumship world. And then at that point it was too late and that's where they were making money and so on. But like I said, when you are involved in these kinds of escapades, and I say this truly and frankly to people out there who, who are mediums right now today, who might be watching this, that um, this is a, this is a bad area to be in. When you are, when you're in a world where you are think that you're helping other people, this isn't help. Mediumship is not helping other people to breathe. No, this is not. You're faking it. You're faking the idea that this is really real. Even if you sort of believe that you're helping somebody, it is not. And in the short term, I might feel like you're helping somebody, but in the long term, you're not helping out at all, especially these psychic detectives. And it is bad on your own self-worth and your own um, self um ability to look yourself in a mirror at a certain point because it's going to be a point in time where you're going to get to where you're going to understand that you're just playing along or you're faking it or whatever and lying to people especially since all the people around you are going to have to either be in on it or they're going to be like sycophants and where they just you know hang on your every word and you can't you can't be yourself anymore because you always have to be um, the person who is contacting the dead people or having a psychic vision and the pressure on you to constantly be like, come on, come up with the goods, come up with the goods. What's going on in my life? What's my mom is sick. What's happening? You know, my brother died. Can you get another message from him? And you, it's not a, it's not a healthy world to be in long-term and you have to stay in it once you get into it, because if you get out, you're always followed by this. You can't say like, oh, the gift left and I, I no longer can can speak to the dead. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. So it's a it's a nasty occupation to be in. And I'm, I'm saying that quite honestly to to people who are in in this business. Um, I would not recommend it, even though there is quite a bit of money in its cash. Uh, I certainly wouldn't recommend it in the long term for anybody. Anyway, so uh, this book is good. It is um, detailed. There's a lot of information in here about the, the history of spiritualism and the history of these sisters and what very tragic ends these two come to. You know, they're ostracized from their family. The older sister, Leah, is, um, you know, hated. And so relationships are absolutely torn apart. Plus, as I said, the alcoholism, they died young. Um, they died pretty much penniless. And it was not a good outcome for these sisters. What they created went on for a very long time. The This is well-researched, uh, lots of notes. The author of this, I was going to go over and, and mention that the author herself, you can tell that she's a bit of a believer in spiritualism. And she was having a really hard time wrapping her mind around saying that it was actually not real, that she was like, well, it's, you know, it just kind of depends on which, you know, she was kind of not uh, giving her answer, but I think she did a fairly good job of trying to keep this, her opinion out of it, but she missed a quite a bit. Um, she says that they were never found out. She says that there was never a really good explanation for it. Oh, as I, I forgot to say, when they went on stage and recounted, recanted with they that they were mediums, it was all ruse. Then within a year, they changed back again. Because there's no money in skepticism. There's no money in being a debunker. So the money is in being in spiritualism. And people were so angry at them. So, you know, you can't be switching course. Let me show you something else because there's like some updates and I'll do that really quick. 
I'm telling you, you guys, check out the Wikipedia pages for these topics. They're always quite interesting. So, it, and it puts it together an overview so that you can understand what's going on. And then when you go into great depth with a book, then you have more understanding of what was happening at the era and maybe it was following, you know, following their lives. So here's the English version of the Fox sisters. This has got um, Margarita, which is Maggie, Kate, and Leah. So Leah was, was uh, the older one that became a medium and that's them back in the day. So this was in 19, wait, 1848. So I was right. I was right about it. They, um, ha this has a lot of information on here, but again, it's, it's in Wikipedia style. So it's summary. And if you want to understand a little bit more, you click on the, the hyperlinks and you can go and understand a little bit more on other, ta other tabs. But of course you'll fall into the Wikipedia hole and you, you know, who knows where you'll be at. <laughs> Um, so it talks about equal rights for women, um, mediumship, criticism. Here's a photo of them much later in their lives. And um, different things of criticism. I found this interesting here about Harry Houdini, who we should all know. Um, he really was active in investigating mediumship right after this era and he says as to the delusion of sound sound waves are deflected just as light waves are reflected by the intervention of a proper medium and under certain conditions it's a difficult thing to locate their source so when you're talking about trying to um figure out if where the sound's coming from and and deciding you know if the sound is coming from these these sisters when it's just sound especially in a room that has you know not great you know has it's a small room it's lit by candlelight there's it's hard to detect some of the other things in here is that um, um kate was examined by some prominent physicist now trust me just because they're prominent and they've got like a degree of some kind does not make them have great common sense um james randy um, proved that multiple times he said this this uh, prominent physicist was concluded that the raps were genuine well they were genuine raps where it's coming from <laughs> is where you know is it the sisters or is it some spirit that's rapping he was later described as being very gullible and the mediums that he had investigated and said were accurate and real mediums were later proved to be using trickery. And let's see. There's other things here. A relative of the Fox family admitted in a signed statement that she had assisted them in their seances by touching people to indicate when the rap should be made. Um, she also says that Kate and Maggie revealed to her the method of producing the wraps by snapping their toes and using their knees and ankles. You know, remember that this is in the 1850s and, um, you know, there was a lot of clothing on women and it was a very modest time. So you couldn't necessarily go and check out somebody's ankles and knees. <laughs> if it was a woman, it would be it would be in bad form for a man to be coming in and, and trying to look at her knees. And <laughs> though it was done, trust me. This talks about the bones that they found in the childhood home and that they were, they were claimed to be found. It looks like it was a hoax. Joe Nickel has a really good article on this. Um, it says, it talks about what happened to Lee, her husband, um, her first husband died. She later marries a very wealthy banker. And then Kate also um, had, Kate and Margaret had very serious drinking problems. They had also fights with their sister and other spiritualists. 
and then Kate died in her home in 1892. And then a year later, Maggie, deep in alcoholism, was living on charity as a sole tenant of a, of a house, and she was um, also died. So very interesting. So my message to you guys, anybody interested in spiritualism, interested in mediumship, that a book like this is a, a great book for getting a lot of detail about what was happening at that time. I love history. I love social history. So this is right up my alley. I enjoyed it and the detail and as, as well. Um, if you, I'm sure there's probably some really good books out there on the Fox sisters. And there's also consultations, comp, you know what I'm talking about. Other small, um, that their history is probably discussed in other books as well, but in great depth, this is a good, this is a good book. I would, I would recommend it as well as something like the Wikipedia page and then following the citations and learning a little bit more about the, the time, the history, because it's all tied together, right? You, we don't live in a vacuum. What's happening to these sisters at this time has a lot to do with what is happening in the world. Like I said, um, the uh, Civil War comes along, and that just escalates spiritualism. Um, the the right to vote uh, for women, um, all that kind of stuff is all tied in together and why circumstances happen. So I hope you found this interesting. Uh, if you did, uh, please go ahead and give me a subscribe. I would appreciate that. I also love your comments. I find uh, history and books all super interesting and I hope you do too but it is important I think to understand um, psychics explained as my channel says we should have a little more information about the background on what's going on in the world at this time and how we got to where we are now so thank you everybody